In 2019 MLB, we saw an outrageous influx of offense and more specifically, the long ball causing many fans, players, managers, front office staffs, scientists, and more to question if there was a significant alteration to the baseball. Yes, Major League Baseball had a baseball problem, and the numbers certainly back it up. But just how juiced were the baseballs in the year of 2019, and how did MLB allow this to happen? Here are just a couple of my favorite stats from 2019. Prior to the 2019 season, the major league record for the most home runs by a team in one single season was set by the 2018 New York Yankees. But in that last year of the 2010 decade, there were four teams that were able to break the previous all-time home run mark. That being the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Houston Astros, the New York Yankees, and the Minnesota Twins, who smacked an outlandish 40 home runs more than the previous record. Let's stretch back the graphic to showcase the top 22 most homerific seasons by a team, and you'll find 10 of the top 22 all occurred within 2019. It wasn't just a home run total that was a dead giveaway of something happening within the baseball, it was the distance these balls were traveling. They were moonshots. There was 183 home runs that StatCast measured in traveling 450 feet or more. MLB played the exact number of games in 2018 as they did in 2019, but in 2019, 101 more home runs traveling over or at 450 feet than the previous season. But this was not just a Major League Baseball issue because this season, AAA, the highest stage of Minor League Baseball, used the same baseballs as the top dogs. And by the AAA All-Star break that season in 2019, there was almost as many home runs hit as the entirety of the 2018 AAA campaign. So clearly, home runs were at an all-time high, crushing records that not even the steroid era was able to produce. And so let's talk about why. But first we have to move back a couple of seasons to 2017. Because in 2017, the league set a record for the most home runs ever hit and they crushed the previous record by about 500 in total. 6,105 home runs were hit in 2017, which I suppose almost seems like a small number compared to the gobstopping 6,776 two years later in 2019. So the questions, the concerns, the growing tension between the players and Major League Baseball wasn't just within 2019. It had been growing for a couple of seasons now. And many in the baseball world not only took notice, but took note to the media to express how they feel about the ever-changing home run environment. The multi-time Cy Young Award winner, Justin Verlander, said this in talking to ESPN, detailing how he thinks it's become a joke, most notably mentioning the fact that Major League Baseball purchased Rawlings. MLB made the deal that passed off season in 2018. The direct producer of every Major League Baseball you see used on the field, now owned and operated by Major League Baseball, led many to wonder if there could be a certain conflict of interest. One of, if not the most important goal for Major League Baseball, would be to uphold the integrity of the game. However, as MLB very well knows, from the home run race between Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, home runs have a pretty direct correlation to viewership. It's without a doubt one of the most exciting events that can happen within a baseball game. I mean, they have an entire event based around the hitting of home runs every July. So if they could include more of those in regular season action, which many have criticized for dragging on too long a 162 game season, the home run increase could directly increase viewership. 
But that was not the case, at least according to Major League Baseball's commissioner, Robert Manfred. He completely denied any direct involvement by MLB to adjust the baseballs in any such manner that would increase home runs. But he did acknowledge that there were, in fact, differences to the baseball than in previous years. Specifically, Rob Manfred had mentioned that there was a lessened drag coefficient to the baseball, which that was a result in effort to center the pill of the baseball more. If you break down a baseball, the pill is what should be directly at the center. It's the core. It's the structure for the whole ball as it's built up. And as a result of attempting to improve the centering of the pill, that has caused the decreased drag within the baseball, which that's created its own problems. When there's less drag on the baseball, the ball may carry further and loss will result in more home runs inevitably. There's also been claims that there were changes made to the stitches on the baseball, specifically that they were thicker than in the past, and some scientists have concluded that the thicker seams has been the cause for the increased amount of blisters that pitchers are receiving. Far more pitchers complained about getting blisters from using the 2019 baseballs than in previous seasons. Overall, the way I see it, Manfred in Major League Baseball denied any deliberate attempt to change the offensive atmosphere, but they are not in denial that something is different. I would say they chose to shoulder some blame, but not a whole lot. They stuck with the answer that there was manufacturing difficulties, that they have to do more research, they're gonna give the balls to scientists within the off season. And so the 2019 regular season concluded, but it only got more confusing from there, because once the postseason started up, it was as if the baseballs had magically reverted to pre-2017 numbers. And the baseball discussion sort of died down, at least until 2022, where there was more issues brought to light. By the beginning of the 2022 season, Rob Manfred and MLB had said they had introduced a new baseball. This one was lighter in weight. And the idea of a lighter baseball would be that home runs should be down, that offense wouldn't be quite as high. A lighter baseball is not going to be hit as far as a heavier baseball. But later on that year, a report from Bradford William Davis and Dr. Meredith Wills, and they had found three distinctly different baseballs, finding one to be a lighter weight, one to be in the middle, and one being a heavier weight, the juiced baseball. MLB received a lot of criticism from this because the medium weight baseball, reminder, Rob Manfred said the lighter weight was the only only one in circulation at the time, but the medium weight, or the Goldilocks ball it was dubbed, was found to specifically be used in the postseason that year, around the All-Star festivities, and interestingly enough at New York Yankee home games amidst Aaron Judge chasing down the American League home run record. Once again, Major League Baseball came out to say that these reports were not based in any truth that the statistics brought up just simply weren't the case. They're using the lighter baseball and they weren't planting heavier weighted baseballs in specific events. And I've seen this conversation get brought up a handful of times. Every team has to use the same baseballs. They have to pitch with them, but they also get to hit with them. So what's the big deal if they're juiced? or if they're manufactured in a way where it's gonna promote more home runs and offense. And to a point, I don't think it matters as long as it stays consistent. What we saw statistically from 2019 caused chaos. It made the jobs of scouts and front offices extremely difficult because you don't really know what's true, what's real within reality of baseball at this point. That is innately going to make offering contracts to players, conducting trades between other teams, getting an understanding of how good your farm system players are far more challenging. All of this becomes clouded to the current game environment caused by the new baseball. In conclusion, I do not think that this is over. I think we're going to have many 
conversations. We're going to hear many articles, many reports from insiders from Major League Baseball themselves regarding what the hell is going on with that baseball. But I want to answer the question, and I pose the same to you. Is a juiced ball good or bad for baseball? We talked about the skewing of analytics that makes it more difficult for the people within the game, but as a fan, I think many would point to they enjoy having more offense in the game. Now, I'm a bit of a baseball freak myself. I have no problem watching a well-pitched one nothing ball game, but for many people, that's boring. If there's not offense, they don't want to watch. And so when it comes down to having trust in Major League Baseball that they're telling the truth, that they have made no effort to alter the baseball and change the results of games, I think you have to look to just one thing, the numbers. They aren't usually one for lying.